come. Walk down the winding path. Don't mind the spooks and monsters. They stay hidden within the trees. There are mysteries in this world that you need to know, and paranormal truths that need to be told. Come, step up into the caravan while we share tales of old, as well as new accounts about things you thought only existed in your nightmares. Cisco is joining us tonight. Hi. 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 Who, 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 who is the gate, here? Or through the gate? Journey through the gate. Yes. Yes. Journey through the gate, and it's a it's it's a creaky old gate. I will tell you. <laughs> well, feel yes. free to tell everybody about your podcast. Oh wow! Well, I wasn't prepared. Thank you so much. That's a gracious host you are. Um, <laughs> well, it's um. It's a dandy little podcast. I'm enjoying it. Uh, basically, I just started it like a lot of people. Um, I basically, honestly, just wanted to talk to these people. I just, I've been listening to people like yourselves for years, and um, I just said, man, you know, I'd love to ask them some questions, and, you know, why the heck not? And it turned out to be, I'm having a ball. I'm having a ball. And just, you know, digging deeper, um, moving past a lot of the, um, you know, I, I've got kind of an edge, if you can think about it, you know, that way. Because I'm not a broadcaster. I'm not on radio. I'm not, I don't have to have somebody else's agenda, you know. I'm not, I'm not trying to sell something. I just want to crack into the truth a little bit. I think we've been in a paranormal for a long time. We've been, you know, you go way back. I mean, people have been studying this and trying to find out what exactly is going on. And um, for some reason, we have, uh, can I say shit ton? A shit ton of <laughs> Sure. Time? You're fine. Okay. okay. We have a shit ton of evidence, if you want to call it that. You right. Know? Um, you know, we've debunked, if that, if you want to use that word, uh, or disproved mm -hmm. an awful lot of evidence um, that has come through the years. But then there's that um, really good stuff that's that's left over that you just makes you go, hmm. You know, there's exactly. definitely something going on, and um, I just think that it's really changed in my lifetime from. I've really watched a lot of change and I just mm -hmm. feel like in some cases we're not getting anywhere and I can't put my finger on why. Is it because everybody's doing their own and nobody's collaborating or is it just there's so much of it and we're not supposed to have any answers and it keeps shifting somehow? I mean, I don't know, you know, but at least I'm sitting here and I can you know, believe what I believe until I get that piece of evidence that changes that and I'm willing to have it change because you have to in this. Mm -hmm. um, right. But I really dig asking people who've also been in it for a long time, you know, what are, what did they come up with? And I don't know if we'll ever have anything like para unity, you know, where everybody mm. just goes, look, this is what we got. We're getting closer, you know. It's right. almost impossible. It's almost impossible. But if people like us keep asking, you know, what was that? What's going on? And digging into it and then putting it out there, we might get a little closer than we than we have. I don't know. What, what are your guys' thoughts on that? I might even sum up something that Jennifer might say. Uh, look, we've researched this too, but we've also hit what is, and it's almost similar to a poll. Uh, what is the most popular topic? Is it Bigfoot? Is it werewolves? Is it, you know, ghosts? Is it, you know, aliens, UFOs, whatever it nine times out of 10, the most popular subject matter is ghosts. It's, uh -huh. it's very popular along with hauntings. I think those go kind of hand in hand with each other. Um, mm -hmm. And yes, there is a plethora of ghost 
talk and podcasts and radio shows and and e- even our show we will cover ghosts also however right. there is a lot of information out there that seems to correlate a lot without so much infighting i don't see as much infighting in the paranormal with ghosts and hauntings as i do let's say in the bigfoot community where everybody's fighting True. to prove True. you know the True. existence of this cryptid I, I want to bring up a real quick point that I found really fascinating, and it didn't dawn on me until Sean, the fork chop forker at the existence of strange things, brought it up that not one single cryptozoologist has ever discovered a cryptid. All wow. unknown animals that have been discovered have been discovered by biologists or uh, marine biologists, those that are in the field. Um, but okay. no cryptozoologist to date has ever classified a cryptid and i found right. that really fascinating yeah i really it did is. it and, is fascinating and yeah same thing with you know you want to know something it, though? It, as i've said before i am not here to prove or disprove i am here because i love to play with the imagination and say what if just to entertain what if and i have to be honest if we found out for a fact, hands down, that this stuff is real, it exists, would it not take away that charm, that mystery, that pull? Yeah. In some cases, yeah. 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 In some cases, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. In some cases, So yeah. I wouldn't want to know in, everything. And in other, you know, I'm, I, it, listen, darling, in other words, it, I sit here and I pray nobody ever finds Bigfoot. And I know a lot of people are like, whoa, right. why? Why? <laughs> because, and the right. reason is because we would put it in a cage, we would poke and prod it, we'd charge, you know, $25 a ticket and a fee, whatever, to go and look at it. And there'd be another sad creature that used to walk free in a cage. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. I just see it that way. Bigfoot to me, and I know this sounds crazy, but we actually had this conversation in my household today because, uh, I don't know how, but, you know, we're just like, you know, weird like that. So I'm sitting there looking at the wood line and I'm, I'm telling my son, I said, can you imagine how many things are out there, you know, that see us and we don't see them? And so you got to think about it. We haven't discovered everything. We don't know everything, you know, and I mean, just to expand right. your mind, it could be anything, it could be anything. It could be, you know, we don't know what's out there, but I you know, then we started talking about other stuff like the existence of, you know, what monsters, because I know Vance and I have talked about this and you and I have talked about this, what monsters could actually exist, you know, and, um, you know, what really classifies a monster, you know, like, because I put a shark in that category, just because we know what it is and we know what it does. You you right. know, if you're in the water and you got one coming at you, I defy you not to call that a monster, you know. But just we, teaches it, it you long- not to be in the water. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, but Bigfoot in the, is in the same category with me as like a wolf man was when I was a kid. Because the old movies of the wolf man, he was always a reluctant guy. He didn't right. want to be a wolf man. He changed. He was always so sad he was going to change. He didn't want to hurt anybody. You know, like I'm talking about the old movies now. You know? Right. Right. Yeah, I remember that. I, Those were good. Oh God, I, I felt so sorry for him, you know. Oh, yeah. And even even like the Wolverine that kind of came off of that is kind of that solemn, sorrowful creature in some ways, you know. Right. And I just kind of yeah. feel like Bigfoot that way in 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 a sense because you know I just look at him as another animal in the woods that we've kind of more encroached on on that territory that he had more than he's encroached on ours, you know, like any animal right. in the woods. Right. That's how I feel. And I hope he right. keeps and going and and stays hidden. That's my thought. Well, I'll expand on that for, I would say, and and I'm just winging this off the top of my head because I really haven't sat to contemplate the reality of the number, but I will say probably within the last five years, I've really started to take the notion that we, as the human race, are not the indigenous species to this planet. I'm really oh, no. starting to think that. Um, no. And the reason why I say that, there are, 
look, the simple human thing, uh, let's go outside and stand outside on a bright, sunny summer day and see if you don't get sunburn. What other creature isn't already protected against ultraviolet rays? Either have fur wow. that protects and the sensitivity, or the animal has a habitat in which it keeps itself protected. We I are think, exposed. But yeah, I, I mean, think I, that we ended up evolving or de-evolving in that way because, you know, you look oh. at, well, didn't we used to have a lot more hair and we, I mean, we were out, I mean, look at the early humans. And then mm-hmm. now as we go inside more and we become more lazy and rely on electronics and our distance from nature, we are, you know, we have more and more problems. I can see both those points. I really do. I think they're both mm-hmm. valid points because even if you go back to if what we were taught about primal man, you know, they still needed to create a shelter, whether it was a lean to or a cave or mm-hmm. something like that to get away. But some animals do as well. It's just like an instinct, you know, and I can see what Jenny is saying too, that we evolved into a, I have a personal belief that in a lot of cases um other planets and aliens and things like that have evolved in their own way if you look at them if you believe what you see and what other people have seen if you just take away the what if and you just believe right. it uh-huh. it seems like right. they've evolved to such an extent that they've lost like a lot of feeling do you see? Do you, do you know where I'm going with this? Like they lost feeling. Their mouths got smaller. They're not right. eating large foods. They're popping pills or doing whatever it is they're doing. You know, um, their you mm-hmm. know mouths right. got smaller. Eyes got bigger. Why did their eyes get bigger? I don't know. Maybe they're dark a lot. I don't know. But that's just one species anyway. But but still, um, evolution. I mean, you can just look at us. I mean, we don't need our wisdom teeth anymore. We don't need certain things. We've evolved through it. There's certain organs we have we don't hardly use anymore that will probably go away in another right. 100 or 200 years. Just mm-hmm. weird. So I can believe both of that, you know. Right. Um, but, you know, what else is out there? Um, we've got, you know, I, I don't know exactly where you guys are, but, you know, in California, they've got like cougars coming down and you know, and coming into the neighborhood. And I know right. it sounds horrible, but I always feel bad for the cougar. You know, it's like you're, or the mm. deer's trying to cross the highway. And I mean, I'm up to past seven the other day, just laying on the side of the road dead because right. we've just taken over, you know, and mm-hmm. maybe that's why we've seen more Bigfoot sightings and stuff like that. And of course, more technology, more people out there and things like that. But if you go back, if you've ever sat for five days at an encampment at a powwow and sat with elders that live, you know, try to live most of their life traditional or spent time on, you know, with people like that, there mm-hmm. used to be a respect for nature. You know, they knew not to go in certain places. That place wasn't for them, and they didn't right. encroach upon it. And that goes around in every country, whether you're talking about your lore, you know, like fairies and in Finland, they won't move a rock because, mm-hmm. you know, of, do you know what I'm saying? No matter what country, the indigenous people yeah. or the people, the tribal people had a respect that we no longer have. You know what I mean? No, that's true. No, right? I we agree. just encroach yeah. wherever it's convenient for us to encroach. Oh, this is a beautiful area. I'm moving here. And, you know, the building starts. And I know that's really simplified because that's not how it works. But if you go back yeah. to settlement, that's exactly how it worked. Look, the land mm-hmm. is rich here. There's beautiful trees. The scenery is perfect. Let's build. Well, you're let's encroaching let's, without permission. Let's destroy it. <laughs> yeah. You know, you are, you are yeah, building with... without permission. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, again, that goes back to Native American culture mm-hmm. of, you know, ask for permission. And, and see okay. if you can live within your means without destroying the environment around you. And it would be nice to get back to that. However, I don't think as a human population we could do without everything that mm-hmm. we have as yeah. of today. You know, people will yell, scream, and hug a tree and say, oh, we need to stop all this. 
But the reality of it is that's never going to stop. It just won't. It's 2018. I'm sorry, but there's a better way of life. We just money. Yeah. I, and I'm, yeah. I'm not trying to jump around too much, but it all ties back in together again. Money is really the root of everything that is happening right now. And yes, there is a better way. There, it, It's there. It's all tangible for us if we were smart enough to be able to manipulate it and figure it out and then not have it taken away from us for discovering it. That's the challenge because you're taking away dollars from somebody that has more power than you. But it goes back to the encroachment thing. And I'm sorry, I don't see that the encroachment is going to stop to save either an unknown cryptid or any kind of species that lives here on this planet you know they seem to be That's falling right. extinct my heart broke when uh, you know this last male rhino had passed away it was like actually he was put to sleep because he was in agony you know we never get that chance again i look at these the film footage of the thylazine or otherwise known as tasmanian tiger well you get reports every once in a while oh maybe one was seen okay now it's gone back into the cryptid category after it was a discovered animal why why did that animal have to not exist anymore well it's because you know oh we've we've encroached on the land we're farming it and these things are around so let's wipe them out same thing was happening with the gray wolf and the timber wolf Mm -hmm. the same thing was happening Mm -hmm. all the second Mm -hmm. no they're a danger to my children let's kill them all (laughs) come on exactly they were there First. They were there first, yep. which brings me all the way back to, are we the indigenous species of this planet? Because we don't no. get along with this planet very well at all. We don't. We don't live within the means of what is offered to us without really bastardizing it. And I'm, I'm not right. trying to bash on a liberal or conservative point of view here. I'm not. I'm just looking at this in a point of view that goes through my mind. That's it. That being said, I would be really curious to see planet look like that we do fit on if we don't fit on this one what in the world kind of planet do we fit on one i guess one that you know just our being here wouldn't change anything listen you can sit outside um i mean i saw your pictures Nancy. i know you spent a lot of time probably sitting outside there too and observing just one small thing can knock everything off you know what i mean like i have i can tell you by you know, just by my watch, what's coming through my yard next. First, I get the ducks and her little ducklings come through. They eat, and then they go off to that way, and they go around. They go back out to the lake. And then I get, like, the geese come by with their, you know, with their babies, and they come through, and then the cardinals come in, and then this one comes in. It's like this: the different species of animals, the squirrels, the, the hawks, the ravens, they all come in at different times or all together. You know, some of them come together and eat and hang right. out, and everything's cool and copacetic. But because it was the first real weekend out here in New Jersey where people, like, got their boats out, it changed everything on the bay that comes off the ocean because they were taking their boats out of the dock and they were taking – so everything just got knocked out and nobody came to eat, Mm -hmm. you know? And then they all came, Mm -hmm. like, real late all at the same time and were just so thrown off. So there's just one tiny little thing that, you know, everything was copacetic and running like clockwork for months, you know, and then all of a sudden one human thing came in, just, a, you know, a couple boats with loud engines and the wakes changed and everything and threw everything off. And that's a small thing. That's something that they can overcome. But, you know, right. we, do more permanent, we do more permanent things as well, you know. Mm. I mean, just something as simple oh, as, sure. you know, a wildfire or putting in a highway in the middle of a, Mm. you know, we don't think of everything that has to relocate. In Native American tradition, you know, we're not even supposed to just go in to pick herbs. We're supposed to only allow to pick one third of the patch that's there. You leave two thirds because, you know, nature is going to take some and, you know, things are going to happen, but you want to make sure that that species lives. And if you take more than that, then, you know, and you never take more than what you can use. You never waste anything. And if everybody thought that way, we wouldn't be in this position, you know? I agree. I, mean, it's just, no. it's, I do. It's just different. But what kind of world? I don't know. You know, maybe something made out of rubber made, maybe. 
<laughs> Something you punch it, it pops. You punch it and it pops back. You know. Right. It, it, oh my know, goodness. I don't know. I would think but my planet would be made time, out of bubble wrap. At the same mm-hmm. time, our bodies. You know, we need water. We need sun. Mm-hmm. And then you know, we need to to do the earthing. And we're right. destroying both of them. I mean, eventually, I don't know how many how many centuries. It might not even be that long. I mean, that you know, a lot of people that I talk to say that this earth is going to shake us off like a bad case of fleas one way or another. And oh, then, yeah. you know, there's microorganisms and bacteria and things like that. They're, they're going to survive. You remember that show that they had on, I guess it was History Channel, might have been Discovery, mm. Life After Life? Oh, I think I heard about it, but I didn't watch yeah. it. You know, right. they take like yeah. a city like Los Angeles and they said, okay, you know, 10 years after you know, there was no population, no electricity, no nothing. You know, the bridges would start to crumble and this would happen. But, you know, like the medium-sized dogs would survive. The small ones couldn't, you know, forage for themselves or get out of the houses or, you know, they really did a good job on that. You know, cats mm-hmm. would survive. You know, right. um, this would happen. Cockroaches, ro- rodents, all these different things, you know, bacteria, you know, the kudzu, you know, all of this stuff would just take over and re um, reclaim, you know, a lot of uh, the cities or, you know, towns right. or whatever. It doesn't oh, yeah. take long. It doesn't take that long. Look at some of these abandoned cities, you know. But, you know, going No, take a look like, at uh, take a look at Chernobyl. Exactly. In Russia, you know, now exactly. that entire urban area has been evacuated. Now, granted, there's a lot of radiation poisoning, but you know what? Mother Nature, right. you know, life will find a way. And it does. Exactly. It and does, yeah. you take a look at parts yeah. of that city, it's being overgrown by plant life. And on mm-hmm. the show in which you were talking about, you know, life after humans. Uh, that's it. Yeah, it's crazy because that's exactly what would happen. You know, the yeah. steel would would deteriorate and become an element back to the earth again and the plants mm-hmm. would thrive off the nutrients and mm-hmm. you know would consume the buildings and it's mm-hmm. again i'm going to go back to referencing jurassic park but there's scenes in jurassic park where they go back to the old abandoned uh laboratories and it's completely overgrown interior yeah. i understand it's a movie yeah. but it's based on what would actually happen take a look at True. somebody's yard that doesn't maintain their property it overgrows mm-hmm. with plant life and because it will consume what was there and, and unless we maintain it it will just reconsume itself and i i did find that series rather fascinating and yet i did as well it's almost rewarding in a way that, yeah, you know, the great George Carlin said, look, uh, Mother Earth is going to be here long after we're gone. <laughs> okay, uh-huh. we're only a part That's of this. The Bigfoots are going to be fine. You know, there are villages now existing right now as we speak in remote areas of, say, like the Congo and, and you know, and other places in Peru and different things that hasn't seen civilization. And they function mm-hmm. just fine. There's no mm-hmm. disease, really, you know, other than, you know, a couple of things, but nothing like we have, you know. Right. They're going to be just fine. Um, and all the and right. all the cryptids and all the animals and everybody else is going to be cool, too. Kind of rewind a little bit before I lose my train of thought. But you were talking about human evolution. And, you know, mm-hmm. Jennifer said about the hair, you know, is coming off the body. If if humans have evolved, let's say in the last 10,000 years, and we have changed how we look and how we behave, do you think it's possible that a Sasquatch, Bigfoot, Yeti, whatever you would like to categorize that bipedal creature, I just clapped because I just killed a mosquito, um, would have evolved also? And the reason why I say that is, you know, so many people in the cryptic community not all, but there's a, there is a percentage that say, well, Gigant- uh, Gigantopithecus may be the ancestor of a Bigfoot. And I'm like, well, okay, that's a good argument to make, but then move that timeline 10,000 years down the road. How would it have physically changed to its environment 10,000 years later, maybe to what people are seeing today? It's a different type of creature, not 
quite the same as what we know of Gigantopithecus, although we don't have a whole lot of, you know, fossil remains. We have, what, you know, some molars and a partial jawbone, but from that, at least we were able to DNA and figure out what kind of a creature this was and how big it was. Some say it might be quadruped. Some say it might be biped. It could be both. But then there's a lot of Bigfoot sightings that say, well, it was on all fours or it was on two legs. So I'm wondering if there was any kind of physiology changes over 10,000 years evolution from a Gigantopithecus to what we now call a Sasquatch. Think that's possible? Could be. I guess. But anything. I mean, I'm just like. saying, I could. I could be, it could be, but this is the way I look at it. Now, keep in mind, I am in no means uh, in, on the level of you guys in this subject. When it comes to, I can only bring to the I, table what I got, right? Yeah. So, uh -huh. walk with me a minute, and I have to go back to my native now, okay? Now, that I, that I do know a little about, and it's like every tribe is different, but there's a lot of similarities, okay? Now, I personally don't think everything that we're saying is a Bigfoot is a Bigfoot, mm -hmm. personally. Range is going to make a difference. Like your, yet, like your Le Yeti and Sasquatch, Bigfoot, whatever you want to call them, all over the world, they're seeing this same type of thing. But because it's large and because it's, you know, got similarities, it's like, it seems to almost go into a category. Now, in a lot of the, with the elders that I've spoken to in different tribal nations, whether it be from Canada or any part of the United States, I've talked to quite a few, um, they always treat anything in that category as a more mystical type of creature. They don't really treat it like, um, maybe that's the wrong word. Um, I want to say mysterious, but also spiritual at the same time. I don't mm -hmm. know if there's a good word for that. Okay. Um, most of them will tell you that it has the ability to um, go in and out of the spirit world would be the term that they, were, they use. That they're mm -hmm. not confined. They're not confined to here. Most of them will say some of them are from here, and it's a different type of thing. And then there's some that have the ability to walk the worlds, whatever that means. I take it to mean dimensions. Mm -hmm. um, some people can throw on that table and say, "Okay, well that's why you've never seen a body." But I've walked the woods and I've lived in, I've not lived in the woods, but I've stayed in them for a long time, you know, very primal way, not in like an RV, but out there, you know, and I've never come across the bear carcass either. But you right. know what I mean? I mean, exactly. by no means, a, wo by I no means a, a woodsman, you know, I don't think that mm -hmm. one thing proves that it could be, but if you're standing there watching it and it takes a step back and disappears. What is that? So either they right. have the ability to, they know where portals are, or they have the ability to disappear, or they have the ability to, to move from dimension to dimension. There's something else going on there with some of them, if that makes sense. No, it makes sense. Look, I am so on the fence of both sides of that topic. I, this is why I don't research a Sasquatch yeah. thing. Because the possibility of both it being an indigenous species to this planet, and it is flesh and blood and nothing more, and then the argument to be made that it has these extra special abilities that we just don't know and, and yet to be able to discover. But on the same token, a person can do the same thing, but we're not going to a different portal, but we certainly can confuse people to think that we did. Sure. And I have done it myself. I have been, I've been out to photograph wildlife in full camo, my brother and myself, and we would be 
doing our thing and we would take some time out and fire the guns off, you know, at the pond or whatever and have some fun. We weren't shooting animals. We weren't hunting. Next thing you know, there's people out there and in order to protect ourselves, we can't lodged. And they walked right past. I mean, they walked right. right past us and we didn't breathe. We didn't move. And they never saw us. What? Not a clue that we were there. Yes. Right. Well, what if, okay, so my theory kind of lies in the middle. So several years ago, this is probably about 11 years ago, I was out camping and there was a tree and I don't know why my attention was drawn to the tree. And I'm, and I'm sure I've told you this before, Vance, uh, mm-hmm. but I saw a face on the tree. It began as a bear face and it morphed into a Sasquatch face. Somebody was with me at the time and we were both staring over there after it had finished. I looked over at him and he looked at me and he's like, did you? And I'm like, see that? Yeah. And we were both like Sasquatch face. So they're out there and they are animals, pure, like just really uh, like monkeys with the ability to um adapt and mimic um real smart Mm -hmm. um and they have you know possibly but i think as well there are definitely spirits in the woods that can take that form they can take any form so i think that that's why there's the two camps of half the people thinking that they're animals and then the other half feeling that they're Mm multi-dimensional right it makes I mean, it makes sense. I I can agree yeah. with that. I can agree with that, and I can also agree with what Vance was saying too, because I've been in the military, and the way right. that we've learned to camouflage. I mean, I'm gonna tell you right now, um, snipers. There's nothing like you know, um, you know, or black ops or anything like that for camouflage. You know, oh, you right. could walk right over them and you wouldn't know that they were there. I mean, a sniper mm-hmm. is one of the Gosh, you want to talk about training and the intestinal fortitude of laying there and, you know, training yourself. Just you just think about training yourself not to pee for 18 hours. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or, or something along those lines and not moving. And I mean not moving a hair. You know, people, if you've never been in or you don't really pay attention, you don't know people, you have no idea what the American soldier goes through, you know, on mm-hmm. any level. But you see what I mean? Like just the training alone and going over. But Mm -hmm. getting back to the camouflage is quite amazing. Now, guess where the American military got a lot of those things from? Native Americans, okay? Including the Boy Scouts took a lot from the Native Americans, you know? Oh, yeah. Right up to different names and things like that. But that whole camouflage thing, you want to see some good uh, camouflage, look at the dog soldier. And they got it Mm -hmm. from nature. Oh, yeah. They got it from nature. So we're right back full circle again of nature teaching us, us learning from nature. It should honestly be a way that we could go back and, you know, get back into that whole living as one kind of thing again. That would be so cool. But I'm on Vance's side, too, saying it is, you know, it just can't happen. There's too many different attitudes about that you know you tell a guy who drives a porsche you know wears a suit and goes into an office and you know he's he's banking you know 150k a year easy you know or or more you know right and that he's got to go back and you know live that way it's just not gonna happen no, you know it's not it's just it's different it's yeah. gender, people are different you know there's enough there's enough people like us out there to keep it somewhat maintained, you know, but it's, 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 it got out of hand a long time ago, you know, and not, and, yeah, no, I agree. And, and really in, in the large scheme of things, not that long ago. So here we are again, and we're seeing more Bigfoot. I personally saw what I consider to be a Bigfoot. I felt it before I saw it. And I think my son mm-hmm. felt it before he saw it, but I was in a moving car cornfields on both sides and we were on a road I knew very well it was in rural Alabama probably all very close to the Alabama Tennessee state line that's exactly where it was and you saw all kinds of strange things out there you know Mm -hmm. Um, because if there are things out there they're definitely getting pushed to the rural areas 
they're going to be smart enough not to be, you know, near development if they can, you know, right. if they can help it. So mm-hmm. we're riding along, and I can tell you that when you're driving on a road that's just, you know, barely wide enough for two cars to get by, and then you've got cornfields on both sides, you're watching. <laughs> you're watching for a deer to come out. Oh, yeah. Years. You're watching for any of that, you know, it hurt people. Kids chase themselves all the time through cornfields and just come oh, yeah. out, you know, get go in there getting stoned and then you start, you know, slap <laughs> sickle fighting and they come right. right out in front of the car. And you don't have that much between the edge of the corn and your car. And I've got this weird feeling and I'll tell you what it was. It wasn't fear. It was like um, sadness, despair, um, confusion. And I honestly thought oh. I was going to come. I honestly thought I was going to come up on a ghost, because that's usually the kind wow. of stuff when I know there's something like that around. Like there's been a car accident and somebody's stuck. Do, do you get my? That's usually what I get. Yeah, I totally get it. And I expected to see something like that, and it was mm. almost like in slow motion we go by and here this thing is standing there, and it. I did not see, unfortunately, I was driving a car, so the car door blocked half All of right. it. But if it was, if it was a quote-unquote Bigfoot, I didn't see its feet. And I saw it from probably the chest up, and it would have been a young one. It looked young. I don't know how to explain that. And it had a huge... Mm-hmm. You know, like when you pout and you really put your bottom lip out and you accentuate, you know, accentuate mm. that. <laughs> yeah. Like a big, like a big bottom lip pout. Yep. Had a, it was very dark brown. Um, the face looked a little like uh, muddled gray. I don't quite know how to explain that with brown hair. Big lip. The lip looked gray, and on the inside of the lip, it was it was more pinkish, and it just had such mm. sad eyes. And as we go by. It was closer to my son because it was on the passenger side of the car. So my first instinct wasn't to slow down and say, do you need a sandwich? Do you need some help or directions or something? My my first instinct was to hit on the gas and get the hell out of there. Oh, well, of you course. Know? Oh, yeah. And not stop and take pictures or anything because if it touched, grabbed anybody, if it was something to be afraid of, it would have got my son first and just instinct. Oh yeah. But the look he followed the car with his eyes and that sadness when I went by him was overwhelming. And it didn't pass mm-hmm. until I got further away from it. So was mm-hmm. it one that was lost? Do they normally put out that kind of that kind vibe. of vibe? Yeah, I was gonna say vibe. I don't right believe on. they do. I don't think mm-hmm. that that's a normal uh I think it was definitely like a a situation. Something had to have happened to it, and that's why it was so overwhelming. Something big in its life. I don't know that they're instinct instinctfully. um, What's the word for it? Um, Just mean either. I just I'm not feeling that. I feel like if we walk up on them in the woods and they're protecting their territory, if we startle them. It always seems like somebody's trying to, when they get pictures or whatever, the thing's trying to get away from them. You know, right. I want to get away from us too. You know, they don't seem to be charging anybody. I don't see a lot of pictures of Bigfoot charging people. I see them always no. walking away or far off in the distance. I mean, do you guys? Mm-hmm. I think seems- that they are protective. I don't think they're mean. I don't think mm-hmm. that they're out for anything. Because it's true, most all of the photographs are them peeking, hiding, mm-hmm. walking away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that would be true for any cryptid. I'll never. Do you guys ever mm-hmm. remember? I mean, not to get you off of Bigfoot, but I swear I saw this. It was around the time you guys might be too young too, where Chupacabra was really hitting the media. Right. I do remember a time. We'll see. Okay. <laughs> and, okay, it was really, really out there. And, I mean, it might have been like an Unsolved Mysteries or something along those lines. I don't know. It had to be around mm-hmm. 90, 92. Okay. And it was on one of these shows, and they had what they called the Chupacabra. And it was more like the 
almost like the chupacabras were not the dog like that it seems to have evolved into that dog wolf with the the skinny with the almost looked like it had like a bad case of mange and a real bad oh, uh, the, right. the teeth and all that kind of stuff. I don't know where that came from. Right. But the chupacabra that almost looked like a little man kind of body. Yes. Lizard guy. Spike. Yes, with the spikes yes. and the eyes and the teeth. Uh huh. And it was the... basically goat goat sucker. It was yes. still chickens and goats in Puerto Rico. Okay. I do remember that. Okay. And then they they said they saw one. Some school children were coming back or walking home from school or something and saw one up against a fence and they were standing there throwing rocks at it. Do you guys remember this? And it was all huddled into the I fence. remember the story. Yes. I do remember the story, but I don't think I heard it from that show. I think it was talked about maybe on another podcast, but I have heard that story. Yes. Oh, God. I was mm-hmm. just, and now see, um, that person that would have been trying to protect the chupacabra. <laughs> like, what are you throwing rocks <laughs> at it for? I love it. You know, that's great. Come with me. Come with me. I'll make you a sandwich. We'll phone home. You know, I mean, just, mm. I mean, I know they're, they look ugly and stuff like that, but this thing was scared, you know? Right. And I think that we would do that to anything. You know, we would do that to anything. We're just that, that type of, um, I don't know. I, I just don't know what we've turned into. Well, Jenny and I have of. had, you know, the conversation before about, and it's like what you brought up at the beginning of this conversation, you know, you'll even throw a shark into that category mm-hmm. of, creature or monster whatever you know what the scariest monster on this planet is definitely the human race absolutely i mean we are definitely because we we won't take a moment's notice to put yourself in the situation of whatever an animal might be doing you're going to take a shot and wipe it out first Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. kill first ask questions later and it has been instinctive humans to do that from childhood that's why you say you know children throwing rocks at it it's the first Mm -hmm. dna instinctive thing that a human will do is to try to remove a threat that might not actually be a threat and it is it's upsetting when you think about it and you say it out loud but how do you change that yeah i think at the same time our species i mean look at look at people that go out and murder for no reason it's just what they do for fun it's Mm -hmm. not i don't know of any animal that does that that's just sick and twisted and going i just Mm -hmm. felt like messing with it for fun well isn't it mark twain who said man is the only uh animal that blushes or needs to you Uh know we we do things that we are ashamed of if we think about it animals don't I mean, like I said, I sit exactly. here, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a nature observer. I have watched, uh, I've got two cat birds out here that absolutely beautiful singers. They love the fountains. They eat. They feed each other. They're wonderful. You get near their nest, I guarantee you they're going to turn into monsters because they're protecting mm-hmm. their oh, territory. I've seen them whoop an eagle's butt, you know, and send it running. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, it's just, it just, it is what it is. They're going to protect her. So, like, if it, I watched a show the other night. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this, Terror in the Woods. I've actually, actually, I was actually supposed to be on that to tell my snot hag, hag story. Really? But I, yeah, but I just said, you know, something's up. They can turn it any way they want. They just Everything was just pointing, no, mm-hmm. don't go do it. So Steve mm-hmm. Stockton and I pulled out of it. And we said, no, go on with it. Now, I saw the show, and it's just... It's just like all the others, and I actually like those kind of shows where they have the person telling the story and then they reenact it, you know, as oh, the person yeah. telling it. Yeah, those but are fun. You don't, yeah, they're fun, but you don't know how much they edited the original story. So you, yeah, if, if you know what I mean. Exactly. You don't know. You don't know. And, um, you know, so that, that'll give you a little pause to think about, too, because I, I know a little bit. I know people that have had shows and been on shows, and they can tell you, like, the production is crazy. You go out, and you think you did it one way, and, you know, all the good stuff's on the editing floor, and they put it together, and it's totally something different. And that's the beauty of television. And it See, just is. And I have yeah. had run in. I, I ran into that when I was in Search and Rescue, and the media would come out, and they'd ask. 
Yeah. They, mm-hmm. They'd ask for, you know, hey, what's going on? And mm-hmm. and all this. You tell them and then you walk by them. They're they're alive. They're telling the story. And it's completely nothing like what you just told them. Yep, exactly. And I don't know what happened to journalism. I don't think there's very much of it left out there. No offense to anybody, but, you know, it's like talking heads, and I think they're all in an agenda. And it's just, I, I don't watch news. I can't, you know, I just you know, know, there I is a, it. Uh, there's huh? a radio personality that I won't mention the personality's name, but he did coin a phrase and I, and I absolutely love the phrase. So if somebody knows who I'm talking about, please don't assume that because I don't do politics on the caravan or Mm -hmm. anything that I do. It's just the term called journalistic journalistic malpractice. And I love that because that's exactly what it is. It's journalistic well, malpractice. You put a spin on it to make it a little bit more intense than what actually mm-hmm. was so that you can sell it. And then when you sell it, you generate more revenue because more people are going to come to you for the big dramatic story when mm-hmm. it's not. And I've kind of I've kind of watched both. I mean, in you know, in 56 years, I mean, I've paid attention. I remember when I was young, there was a certain amount of truth that you 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 know when they said it when somebody said it on the news it was supposed to be true they printed it in the paper right. it had to be true right. now right. there was rags and things like that that you didn't believe you know and then you start getting through this and you know a lot of the journalists it seemed like you know especially ones that were writing for the paper they were you know um you know like those rogue journalists who go around and then they you know put them everybody wanted the big story but they really worked at getting the truth and getting the facts, you know. Mm-hmm. And now I'm sure they're out there, but they've been bombarded by all this other stuff. So it's the same as anything else. Vance, you and I were talking multiple times about, you know, we all have pictures. We don't want to put them out there. I've got great photographs of, of ghosts that I took, you know, of mm-hmm. things that I took. I was there and I have zero technical abilities zero uh-huh. you know uh-huh. and even though i've done this pat- podcast pretty much by myself i didn't do it by myself i had i was had people i could ask questions thank you vance i had you know and jeremy and you know shannon and i had a bunch of youtube videos from several different people that would show you how to do one step on audacity or something else you put it all together and boom podcast it was nice but then you still have mm-hmm. questions and you learn okay but you know th- these people who knowingly now just put out stuff with CG and all this other just to get hits on YouTube or get something else. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, uh, Rich Gordano was talking about from the Paranormal Code. He was talking about it the other day. He's like, this is ridiculous. You know, Uh, there's so much nonsense and so much, um, garbage out there that people are just putting out there we don't even know what we're looking at anymore i can't look mm-hmm. at something and see that it's cg i swear i mm-hmm. saw you know lost in space the other day and they weren't really lost in space you know i mean right. they can do anything with film and mm-hmm. uh, you know and a 13 exactly. year old can do it, it, it you know with a couple of things of software and a laptop in their mom's basement while eating cheetos and humping down monster drinks you know whatever I can't do it and I can't look at it and see. Mm-hmm. But um, so there, you know, people are crying for evidence and then you give them evidence and it's not evidence anymore. And it does nothing right. but create confusion and an argument. And you, you brought it up too, Jenny, in the beginning. You don't want to touch Sasquatch anymore because everybody's mad at it. Who was that lady exactly. that got the, that hair sample? And then she puts it out there, and then everybody else mm. is yelling at her in this community no, here. And this, oh my God, what a mess that was! You mm-hmm. know, and then oh, I'm yeah. seeing right. people. Oh God, it was horrible. And I'm seeing these people that are trying to prove prove that he exists. And the Bigfoot that kept coming to the cabin, I guess, to look for you guys probably heard this. Come to look for food, you know, like a bear would or anything. They're foraging. They're trying to get food, and they put a board with nails. Uh, mm-hmm. 
oh, in yeah, front of right. the door. Yeah. So it would step on it so they could get a DNA. Who's the yeah. savages? Well, yeah. who's the I savages? Mean, I think I told you both this, and I'll just repeat it, but, I mean, it's so bad that I had posted a picture, and it was a tree stump, and I specifically said, hey, everybody, this is a tree stump, but wouldn't it be crazy if it was a Sasquatch? Because I'm telling you, it looked, it had the head, it had the shoulders, everything, and, man, people got angry, saying that that's not a Sasquatch, this, that, and the other thing, and I'm like, hey... I specifically said it was a tree stump, man. Uh-huh. But <sighs> and see, I don't engage in crap like that. If you put a negative thing on my picture, it's either going to be deleted or you're going to be ignored. I don't stir mm-hmm. it. I yeah. was told a long time ago, no offense, man, but the more you stir shit, the more it stinks. I will not engage with you. You right. come to me face. Right. You come. To, you have the guts to come to me face to face and say something. You'll have all the engagement you can handle, but I'm not going to engage you on. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? You're just, exactly. You know, negative, negative block, block, block. You know, I don't care what it is, especially like mm-hmm. any cruelty to animals. Block. I can't. I can't do. I can't. I just don't. You know what I mean? I I won't have anything to do with it. But if you, if somebody is gonna like on my page, we've got the gatekeepers. Just like everybody's got like an insider thing. I wanted it to be up there because if people had an experience and somebody else had an experience, and really wanted a question answered. You know, hey, has anybody ever had this happen? I heard this and saw this. I want to be able to put it on there. And I want people to be able to respond, yes, I have. Did it look like this or did it sound right. like that? To try to get answers. But if somebody jumps on one of my people, gone. You know, for you know, or they put up a picture and they're just asking a question. I had a guy, let me tell you, I had a guy, a sweet man. Um, he's an older man. He lives in Mississippi. He's just a nice guy. He likes to do videos and likes to teach people how to do uh, crafts and handy things and and fix stuff. Mm -hmm. And he, every month, around like three to four weeks apart, it's never on the same date, but it's close. He looks up at a certain star and and it looks like a star. I can't tell you what it is. But it moves almost like you would say UFO, it's not a shooting star. It doesn't go in one direction. It moves, it goes back and forth, it zigzags, and then it takes off and just Whoa. And I took, he, he was out photographing a raccoon that was like kind of stealing his cat's food, and he was showing his roses, and he was doing something else, and all of a sudden he goes, there it is. And he picks up the camera and he shows it. I posted that on four different group sites. And ask the legitimate question. I have a friend in Mississippi who needs help. He wants to know what this is. He doesn't live. He's done a little bit of research. He's not into this. But he doesn't live by a military base. It doesn't seem like it's a drone. It's always near the same place. It seems to be way too high to be a drone. You know, I mean, it looked like the size of When oh, Venus yeah. is really bright, it kind of looked like that. You know? And he yeah. called it a crit. He called it a crazy star, and he just wanted to know what it was. Nobody answered me, and everybody took it off their group. Really? really? Wow. See, and my reaction and is... They, and they took it off. Because, wow. I guess they thought it was a, a joke, and it was a legitimate question for a friend. Well, and I got, I've seen that. I got that. zero help. I got zero help. I, I've seen it. Like, when I was... Um, Man, I was a teenager, and I was living more towards the coast here in Oregon, and there was a star. I thought it was a star, but it was really weird because it went back and forth from the left to the right, and Mm -hmm. it did this for several days, and then all of a sudden it zigzagged like a Z and then just shoots off, and it's like Mm -hmm. it was, it went so fast that your eyes and your body didn't, it like you couldn't process what you just saw, and you're literally sitting there going, did I... Did I really just Just see that? that? Yeah. Yeah. But see, that's that. You you send it to people you think are going to say, you know what? Look, I don't want to, you know, hurt your feelings or anything. But but he didn't care what it was. He just wanted to get some answers because he didn't know anybody. You know? Right. Exactly. And, 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 you know, and, and you have all these people that say, 
we have quest for answers and we're we're out there we're going to help other people figure out what they're seeing and all that mm. zero out of right. four different places out of four different places zero you know and i even posted it this man has no That's idea really what you know this isn't a guy this isn't a guy trying to hoax this isn't a joke this isn't a post it note with a picture of a ufo stuck on some scotch tape video caught on you know ufo caught on tape right. he wasn't even caught in a ufo he said what right. is this and it keeps happening so a lot of times people will have you know, not saying that was decent evidence, but it was something. It was something right. unidentified. You know, right. that's all UFOs are, unidentified flying object. It was obviously flying somewhere, you know, mm. and I saw it. I can still pull it up. I can send it to you, Vance, and you can tell me what you think. You, you know, I would you appreciate Jenny. that if you would. Yeah. I would really it could, appreciate it. It could be absolutely nothing, and there's nothing uh -huh. in size or, you know, I mean, it literally looks like a star. In fact, if it just took off and went in one direction, I would have said it was a shooting star, you know, because we've right. all seen them, you know, right. but it wasn't, it didn't do that. It didn't do that. So, I mean, that's kind of nuts, right? So, again, you know, we could all put up our pictures. I stood in the middle of the wheat field in Gettysburg, and... I went in with reverence. I went in with respect. I, you know, I did my thing and I asked permission because I hadn't take, taken any pictures yet. I won't do that because I come again as a native person that, you know, you ask somebody before you take something. And taking somebody's picture is taking something. Do you know what I mean? It, it just is. Right. And plus, right. if they, you know, if, if they're standing there and for, they're from that era, you know, cameras looked a whole lot different, you know, and you don't go at them with that kind of rudeness. So I asked permission. I said, I would like to have a picture of just this field if you don't, you know, if it's okay with you. And uh, just for my own personal, so I can remember where I stood today, you know, and everything I just did. And um, I'm a blues singer. I actually got out there and I, I was so... I know we're not talking about ghosts, but I got to share this now. I was so overwhelmed by the sheer tonnage of emotional energy on that field that I I wouldn't even let the people that were with me walk on it. I said, don't don't even walk in there. I can't. Oh, yeah. I can't. I can't protect you, and I can't protect myself at the same time. I have to walk up in here alone. And I don't know, are you guys familiar at all with, you know, uh, you know, around the edges, Gettysburg and the battle and yes. all that stuff? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, you know, you're, are you familiar with the wheat field and what happened there? There were basically there was a there was a a good two days of fighting there. The wheat was probably up to your shoulders. Everything was very hand to hand. And when uh, you were wounded or fallen, you fell down in the wheat and it was kind of hard to see where you were and the smoke just covered. So there was no visibility whatsoever. Now, when mm -hmm. the battle stopped, it would usually stop because it's getting dark and you couldn't see. So they didn't really fight at night. They'd go to their separate sides and they'd huddle down for the night. And all the wounded were left on the field and they were screaming and yelling and begging and calling for their mothers and begging for water and yelling out names like, you know, Smith, come get me, you know. You know, it hurt so bad. And to have to sit there and listen to people that you fought with screaming oh, yeah. in agony like that. So the living were going through the emotion, and so were the, the dying and the wounded. Now, earlier in the day, there was cannon fire from beyond that on the other side. And the cannonball had gone past where the wheat field and stuff was, and it hit a farm. And it happened to be a hog farm. And the fences came down and the barricade came down. So when the hogs got loose, they all went after the wounded. So now they got to listen to the hogs eating the wounded. Right. And the scream. Oh, and the terror. Now that's the weak oh, field. Yeah. And that went on for two days. Now you walk mm -hmm. up into that being any kind of sensitive, impasse, medium, whatever you want to say. You can walk up there and not have ability to be bombarded by that emotion. And I walked halfway up into that, and the tears just – and I'm a hardened soldier. I'm one jaded old son of a gun. But when it comes to something like this, I'm um, I'm an emotional mess. 
And mm-hmm. I walked up into that, and I couldn't think of what to say. And I'm getting hit with all of this erratic energy and the sadness and depression. And I just said, stop. Everybody stand there and stop. I don't know what I can do to help you all at the same time. I said, the only thing I can do is sing. And I chose a song that both sides would have appreciated and known back in that time. And I sang Amazing Grace in my best blues. And I belted it. And I sang three choruses of it. And when I stood up, I mean, tears just rolling. And everything stopped and calmed down. And that's when I asked, that, that I, have to, I have to go, but I will be back, I promise you, and I will bring help. Yeah, thank you so much for coming on. That was absolutely fantastic. Um, and I will talk to all of you later. Watch your step. Let's you move on days It lay there cold Eating underneath your last breath Hold your tongue Still I've gone The beast that follows Is close but will move on Snake eyes Oh